There are perhaps few people who are as acutely aware of how dire the situation is than Dr. Ian Player, a man who in the 1960s was instrumental in bringing the white rhino back from the brink of extinction and who has spent his life fighting to save wilderness areas because he realizes how integral they are to our spiritual well-being and how the consumer demands from an overpopulated world are impacting on our natural areas, threatening our very survival on this planet. I think we're in very dire straits, to put it mildly. Population pressures are so great on everybody. We, we're all affected by it. There's not a government in the world that likes to talk about it. Well, with respect, China was the only one. If we don't acknowledge what is happening, nature will do it for it. And she's ruthless. And at one time, we were, we were close to nature. But now there's a, an enormous split between humanity and the natural world. What have we lost? There's a wonderful quote from one of Jung's adherents. We've lost a world that once pulsed with our blood, breathed with our breath, did the wind used to cry, and the hills shout forth praise. That's what we've lost. We've lost that sacred connection with the earth. What can we do to rekindle that? I think that the wilderness experience is the one way of reconnecting. You are in the process of confronting yourself. And not only is there the walking, but there's the sleeping on this red earth of Africa, this very ancient continent from which we all evolved, which I call the landscape of the human soul. What has the wilderness personally done for you? It saved me, it saved my life. And that is why I have devoted my life to it. I mean, I was completely lost. And I went into the army at the age of 17, came out at the age of 19, no education at all, and then wandered all over trying to find work. Eventually I had to work on the mines. 6,000 feet down below, and then going up to what was then Rhodesia. So I was a completely lost soul. And then when I started working with the Natal Parks Board, I began to realise that life was important, and that it was very important that these places were made available so that other people could, could save themselves. It's the sitting on that mountain and saying, and listening to that biblical phrase out of the Psalms, be still and know that I am God, that you are now part of the universe, not separate, part, and everything is sacred. My first real experience of a deeper connection with nature happened many years ago, when as a young schoolboy, I went on one of Ian's Wilderness Leadership School trails, which had an enormous impact on me. Ian's first experience on a deeper level with nature was in a more dramatic setting. In 1950, I initiated the Amzunduzi Mgeni Canoe Marathon. And really, I had, on that very first journey and subsequent journeys, a what is today called a wilderness experience, but I couldn't articulate it. I was caught in a big storm in a gorge there, and uh, it made a tremendous impression upon me. C.G. Jung said, we don't come into the world a clean slate. We come with a million years of evolution and that's carried in the unconscious. When he was traveling in Kenya, he saw that lone man there, and he saw himself there 6,000 years before. And Jung always said, thank God I saw Africa. Thank God I was able to go through Africa. It was Lawrence van der Post who introduced Ian to Jung, and who, together with Ian, established the Wilderness Foundation in the UK in 1956. The bond between the two men was ignited when Ian read Lawrence's book, Venture to the Interior. I'd never met Lawrence, I knew nothing about him. I read that book from cover to cover that night. And then I knew what had been missing. Von der Post was able to graphically inculcate an understanding about the spirit of Africa. The spiritual element is an integral part of the Wilderness Leadership School that Dr. Player founded. Just as dream interpretation is central to the wilderness philosophy. The wilderness experience, of course, is a religious experience. One has to understand that. It's epitomized in Christ's journey into the wilderness. But then, of course, the same thing happened with Muhammad and many of the other 
thousands of prophets that went out into the desert. But what was happening was that they were getting into contact with that very primordial part of themselves.